your GPA and your MCAT score are not good enough. And it doesn't take much Googling to find proof. 3.88 GPA, 521 MCAT, 38 total medical school applications, one interview, and zero acceptances. Rejected. 4.0 GPA, 520 MCATs, two interviews, one wait list, and that wait list, eventually a rejection. Zero acceptances, rejected. What is going on? Those stats are crazy. 50,000 pre-meds apply to medical school every single year. Some of them with GPAs greater than 3.8, some of them with MCATs greater than 517, still get rejected. In fact, only 60% of those 50,000 students get in. That means 30,000 get in and 20,000 pre-meds don't get into a single medical school. What is going on? on now it's really easy to write those applicants off like oh they must have some serious red flag or their letters of recommendations were just so weak but i actually encourage you to skim those two videos of the students that dr ryan gray worked with bit so that we can get you in to medical school application in terms of nuts and bolts first application cycle second application They're really humble coachable pre-meds who have clearly worked their tail off and yes i watched them the first student is international. That does lower her odds. And yes, the second student submitted his secondaries a full month late because he started a full-time job while applying. That's completely understandable. And there are some secondaries that I submitted that were an entire month late as well. Remember, the truth is that international students do get into medical school every year. And people who submit their secondaries late, like I did, do get interviews and eventually acceptances every single year. Let's take off our mindsets of criticism and put on our hats of learning and see what we can get from these experiences from these two students who are very, very vulnerable and shared their journeys with us. Recognize that it's really easy to just give these wild one-off excuses without knowing their full context. And so we won't do that. Today, we're gonna to talk about why your GPA and your MCAT are not the entire picture and is often not enough in today's hyper-competitive med school admissions environment. Main idea number one, defining holistic admissions. Ever since holistic admissions has really made its way into popular pre-med culture, I've heard kind of a mix of different definitions that really encourage different behaviors. Today, I wanna to be clear about what holistic admissions means to me. I see many students with 2.7 GPAs and 495 MCAT scores say, hey, medical school admissions is holistic. I'm a normal guy, I'm a normal gal with a normal personality, and I know I wanna be a doctor. That should be good enough. Medical school admissions, thankfully, is holistic, and they will overlook my 2.7 GPA, 495 MCAT score. When I say your GPA and MCAT score won't get you into medical school, I am not saying that your GPA and your MCAT score won't keep you out of medical school. To be explicit, my definition of holistic admissions is that every single part of your medical school application is a piece of the puzzle, but in and of itself is not enough alone. Excellent letters recommendations, great. That means other professionals view you positive. An MCAT score lower than you'd like, fine. It might've been just your performance on that day. It might've been your resources. It might just be that you're not the world's greatest standardized test taker, fine. But don't take this logic too far and say that your interviews or your extracurricular activities are going to cover up your really, really poor GPA or MCAT score or letters of recommendation. Main idea number two, the opportunity cost of leveling up your GPA and your MCAT score. I may be dating myself here, but if you ever played RuneScape or any RPG role-playing game, you'll know that when you level up, you get skill points that you can choose to allocate. What that means is you can add a point to fishing or add a point to strength or add a point to magic or add a point to archery. But if you add a point to fishing, you're not going to have that same point for smelting, for example. If you spent $10 on that wine, you can't spend $10 on that mouse pad. Now, for medical school admissions, what are your options? Well, I think it's your six levers, your GPA, your MCAT, your extracurricular activities, your letters of recommendation, kind of your school list, and then your personal statement, secondaries, and interviews. Those are the options where you can put skill points into. At first glance, it seems like all the options are kind of equivalent. 
But I think there's a nuance that I haven't really heard described elsewhere. In short, I think your GP and your MCAT scores have kind of a ceiling. Whereas I think other levers like your extracurricular activities, your letters of recommendations, I think they're rather limitless. Let me explain. Let's say you want to take your GPA from a 3.83 to a 3.88. That cost, maybe 12 to 16 units of straight A's, maybe a whole summer that you take to take coursework. Maybe you take extra fourth or fifth courses for one or two quarters to try and make up that GPA different. Let's say you want to take your MCAT score from 519 to 523 or 509 to 513. The cost? probably an entire summer of studying, maybe eight to 12 weeks of full-time work. Letters of recommendation. Let's say your PI has written a letter of recommendation that says you're in the top seven or eight undergrads that he's ever mentored. Now, let's say you wanna be the top one or two undergrads. The cost for that, maybe another project, maybe a couple of presentations at your lab meetings, taking some initiative. Maybe you wanna take a very generic standard tutoring for molecular biology really niche down and become a teaching assistant for folks in the incarcerated system to help them get their associate's degrees. The cost for that, maybe protecting a summer of time to work on this extracurricular activity full time. Look at the difference between this shadowing example and this one, this hospital volunteering gig and this EMT experience. To me, the jump in GPA and MCAT isn't quite as remarkable. I glance over 3.83 and 3.88, they kind of feel the same to me, but the difference in letters of recommendations, extracurriculars, or personal statements and secondaries and interview levers, however, I think are actually limitless. I find that your academic levers, your GPA and your MCAT score, follow more or less an asymptotic pattern it levels out. On the other hand, letters of recommendations, extracurriculars, personal statements, secondaries, and interviews follow kind of an exponential curve. I think the ceiling there is limitless. The same investments made time and effort wise to your GPA and your MCAT score will go much farther on these levers. The same effort that you use for these academic levers to marginally improve them to be used for these limitless levers to exponentially set you apart from other applicants. The same investment here takes you from a leveled out curve to skyrocketing in comparison to the competition. Well, so how do we use this information? Here's my approach to systematically improving your medical school admissions odds. There should be a ramp up phase where you dedicate your entire time and intention to your GPA. College is a different animal. For people, say folks who may be more privileged to study in more elite high schools, this ramp up period may take a single quarter. For others, this may take two years, and that is a-okay. In this period, you should throw absolutely everything in your life to make sure that your academic levers stay strong and foundational. That means your entire life should be optimized to building that skill set. This means you watch Ali Abdal's effective studying Skillshare class. This means you watch Prerok Jutani's course on how to use Anki in pre-med. This means you watch my series on smart studying. Anything and everything to help you feel confident academically. That means sleeping right, eating right, exercising right, all in the name of protecting your stats. Remember, friends are temporary, GPA is forever. Then, once you have that settled, you make a plan and protect your time to absolutely give yourself the best shot on the MCAT. Because every test goes on your record and every test requires a significant study period, you really wanna take it as few times as humanly possible. Those two things alone will set the building blocks of your application. No building blocks, no application. So do your due diligence and get that settled first. And of course, back to the title of the video, your GPA and your MCAT score are not enough. Now, once you have that settled, you can ramp everything else up. I really like to think of this in phases or in seasons. After you finish your academic season, you move on to your extracurricular letters or recommendation season. And when you're in that season of ramping up your extracurricular activities, you put everything into building that lever. Of course, that means putting your GPA and your MCAT on maintenance. Have it hum along, simmer along. It's not dead, but it's not taking up all of your time and resources. For my nearly seven years of advising pre-med students, I'm actually gonna take a pretty aggressive stance here. I am fully encouraging you to make the intentional, conscious decision to actively divest time away from your classes if it means all that time goes into being exceptional with your extracurricular activities, your letters, recommendations. 
So even if your GPA dips down a little, that's okay. Remember, you're going for the big leagues and the exponential curve that follows extracurricular activities and letters of recommendations, you want to hit that takeoff point. Remember your hands gripping onto that steering wheel and really only focusing in on the one or two cars that were in front of you. You can focus on anything else. No music, no conversation. You were paying attention to anything that moved on that road. Now I'm out here driving on the freeway and I see people driving with their knees. Not that I recommend it, but what I'm saying is once you develop a skill, you can layer skills on top of that, but you need those building blocks. Even if medical school admissions is holistic, you need the building blocks of your GPA and your MCAT before you can graduate to that next phase and try to hit that limitless exponential curve. And that's why your GPA and MCAT score are not enough to get you into medical school. For advanced pre-meds deeper into the journey, it's because I think your GPA and your MCAT scores follow a more petered, leveled off pattern where your extracurriculars, letters of recommendations follow a more exponential, limitless curve. If you got what I wanted you to get from this video, if you're struggling with your academics, you'll watch my study series and the resources that I talked about above. If you want to see what exceptional extracurricular activities look like, you'll want to go watch my full medical school application review series. Or if you want your six levers evaluated personally by me, consider application dissection, a tool that I use to systematically assess every part of every point in your agreement journey. I'll break down each of your six levers and give you next steps on how to improve each and every single one of them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.